This is the black pot. AKA Kuku show them away. We speak truth to power. Now here we don't criticize, but if we must criticize, we'd only just criticize to build and not to destroy. That is why we say we are in the service of God and country. It is all about our people, our continent, our land. This is the voice of the people. And from the news reel, we keep it real. This is the voice of God because the voice of the people is the voice of God. Now the very first story I am looking at today is taken from my own three news.com. The most authentic source of news online. And it says, John Tua states how influx of Chinese tanker trucks can cause capital flight and weaken the city. And I read it. Energy aspect. Energy aspect. Kwame Jantua has warned that the influx of Chinese tanker drivers in the petroleum sector of the Ghanaian economy can result in capital flight and weaken the city. I take that again. Energy aspect. Kwame Jantua has warned that the influx of Chinese tanker drivers in the petroleum sector of the Ghanaian economy can result in capital flight and weaken the city. He explained that the Chinese would convert the proceeds they make from CD to dollars and repatriate that. When that happens, he said, it will put pressure on the local currency and further worsen its woes. Although he recognizes that foreign investors are needed to boost the local economy, there is a need to protect local players and ensure that they are given premium places in the petroleum sector to occupy. Local tanker drivers say their checks have revealed that about 300 tanker trucks have so far been imported into the country. Now, speaking on the Sunrise Show on 3FM, with Johnny Hughes on Wednesday, September 27th, that is today, Mr. Jantua, who is also a private legal practitioner, and uh, said, one thing we should be mindful of is that the Chinese are always strategic at what they do. They have a refinery. They have the raw materials. They now have tankers. The next you see is that they have Petroleum garages. He added, now the most serious aspect is the capital flight issue. We need dollars in the country. The cities that day the Chinese will earn from refining petroleum products will have to change into dollars. They are taking dollars out of the system which affects our city and we cannot allow that to happen. The money that they make goes into their banks. But our banks, not our banks, we have to ensure that the money stays in our banks for development. Now, Kwame Jantua, as we are told here, is an energy aspect. And all that he's saying is that it is good to have investors in the country. But we must be wary of the fact that as these investors come into the country, there would be some capital flight. In other words, they will earn their money. And if they are expatriates, they would expect that they be paid in dollars. Now they will carry the dollars out of this country. The much needed American dollars we need in this country, they will carry that out. And they will put pressure on the weak city to weaken it even further. Topically, this makes sense, isn't it? But let's get deeper into what the energy expert is talking about. Listen, in our country, we have allowed foreigners to come in here and dictate to us what currency they want to be paid in. We negotiate. They come into the country and they carry the so-called 
weaponized American dollar out of this nation, leaving us weaponless and harmless. Did I say harmless? Hapless. Hapless. My brother, my sister, what is Black Rasta saying? Listen, when you go to China, you dare never say that you want to be paid in American dollars when you are working for the Chinese. You will end in Chinese yuan. When you go to America, if you want to be beheaded for the first time by the American system, my brother, my sister, in modern times, tell them that you want to be paid in the Nigerian Naira and that you do not want the American dollar. They will execute you publicly. Now go to England and tell them that you want to be paid in Ghanaian city. You could be the world's number one expert in whatever field, but in these countries, you will be paid in your own currency, my brother, my sister. For expatriates to come into this country and be paid in American dollars, I see that as a slap in the face of our heritage and our democracy. For expatriates to come into this country, no matter how much we need them, and we pay them in the American dollar or the British pound, it's an insult to our ancestors, our democracy, our heritage, and our pride. How many people agree with me? Now I'm going to go deeper. Hear me now. When we read our budget, in fact, if you close one eye and close the next eye, my brother, my sister, you might think that we are in America reading a budget for the American people. Everything is dollarized. We are quoting our figures in dollars. Do we understand what it means to say that we want to de-dollarize our economy? Do we understand the marketability of currencies? Do we? This is class one economics that even the dumbest economic student would understand. My brother, my sister, the more you continue that clarion call to pay people in dollars, the more you continue parambulating every corner and dollarizing every single corner. My brother, my sister, the dollar will continue to be the almighty. My brother, my sister, it is about time we started paying our people in the Ghanaian city, even if they are God and they come to work in this country, they have to be paid in the Ghanaian city. We must give some respect to our currency. My brother, the currency is equivalent to the flag of the nation. Anybody who looks down on a nation's currency is inequivocably also looking down on the flag and the people of the nation. I'll give you an example. Now in Uganda, there were some Indians and Chinese who looked down on the Ugandan currency. Idi Amin Dada made sure that he showed them where power was. My brother, my sister, it happened in the days of Kwame Nkrumah. Today, my brother, my sister, it looks like even babies, they do not want to hear Ghana City. All of them want to hear dollars because we have promoted the dollar so much. People are paying dowries in dollars. The other day, a friend of mine was getting married to his longtime girlfriend. And then he went to pay in dollars. My brother, the whole village came out to clap for him. People were going around and clapping that, oh, he had paid his dowry in dollars and therefore he was capable of taking care of his wife. Father was pushing the daughter so quickly. Mother was also doing that. As for the Akuntasi, Akuntasi, Akun, Akuntasi kind, my brother, my sister, they paid that in pounds. My brother, my sister, what are we doing to our democracy and our heritage? Now, let me come to uh, Kwame Jantua. And let's deal with this situation. It is very good to have investors in the nation. But the almighty must be the Ghanaian. Now I hear tanker drivers are going to be on strike. They're going to be running helter-skelter, making so much noise that uh, the government of the day would listen. It's okay to go on demonstrations. But listen, we are so lazy in this country and so unpatriotic, my brother, my sister. Anything yellow. 
we put above us. Anything blue, we put above our blackness. And therefore, non-entities and idiots in America and England and France and China and even the Arab world who are nothing in their country, they come here and all of a sudden, they are somebodies. All because we have a self-inflicted law, 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 law to the umpteenth time. My brother, my sister, conscience. Our egos are totally blunt, numbed. It's very sad that as a people, the gateway to Africa, Pan-Africanism is almost dead in this nation until we rewire the minds of the people. Tanker drivers will soon come from India. Some would also come all the way from Afghanistan and take over our economy. Uh, Jantua, with all respect, I like how you are trying to protect the Ghanaian people. But can we also delve into this another time? Why are we not even talking about the energy sector itself? Why can't Ghanaians control that? Every time we need expatriates to come here. So where well, I saw independence. Why is it that every six months you, watch on, you walk on the street, march around, bring innocent little children to come and bask in the sun? Just to mark an independence that is non-existent? Your energy sector is totally controlled by Chinese, Indians, and Americans. Your mining sector is totally controlled by expatriates who carry dollars out of this country, weaponize it and return it to us to kill ourselves and also to commit suicide. This might be too deep for some people. They need to drink cocoa before they would understand this. Jantua, thank you so much for what you have said. But instead of just looking at the retail side, let's get into the wholesome wholesale story. This is deep for somebody again. Let us stop treating symptoms. And let's go deep into the very fiber eh, of the disease. That is the only way we can save our nation. Clear out all those people from the energy sector. Clear out all those expatriates from the mining sector and put our own people in there. For how many years has the University of Ghana been there? From the late 1940s, we came into existence. By 1957, we were already a full-blown university. And by 1961, we were the University of Ghana. We have not been able to produce good mines enough to deal with our mining sector. We don't have good enough brains to deal with our energy sector. Oh my God have mercy. Every time you need Chinese, every time you need Lebanese, you need Indians, you need Americans. Anytime there is a blessing on us, we need all these people to carry away the money. And the conversation is not even about dealing with this situation, but to do retailing. What is a tanker to a, 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 an oil field or a refinery? Control the refinery. Why do Ghanaians take so much interest in controlling tributaries when they can control the sources? Kai, somebody needs to hear this again. Why are Ghanaians interested in controlling tributaries when we can control sources? My producer has picked up his pen. He's writing it down. He's going to give you a quote later in the day. Why are Ghanaians so interested in controlling tributaries when we can control sources? Why are we too interested in treating symptoms when we have to deal with the very fiber of the disease? Somebody's busy talking about tankers. Six million tankers are in this country. Seven trillion tanks. So what? The most important thing is to control the energy sector. Let us control our own mines, control our own oil fields. If Ghanaians are put in there and they take hold of this thing, 
and deal with that patriotically, my brother, my sister, we would not have to worry about Chinese and worry about Lebanese and even Indians. Every niece and cheese and whatever will never ever be taught about. Think about it, man. Next thing I want to deal with before I go on to Alan Chema thing is this thing that I'm taking from my joy online. And it says, Ghana Airport Company fined 200,000 Ghana cities for failure to provide Joy News with Frontiers Healthcare Services contract. And I read, the Ghana Airport Company Limited has been slapped with 200,000 fine. Yes, with a 200,000 fine. That's Ghana cities by the Right to Information Commission for failing to comply with directives to provide access to information. The commission's decision came in response to a letter from the managing director of GACL, Mrs. Pamela Jamson Tete, dated September 7, 2023. The MD had requested a one-week extension to gather and submit information to join News's head of research, Raymond Aqua, as directed by the commission. In a letter dated September 2023, with reference number, blah, blah, boom, 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 the uh, commission expressed uh, its dissatisfaction with GACL's delay in providing the required uh, information. Now, the commission had previously issued directives on February the 3rd, 2023, and February the 16th, 2023, specifying the format in which the information should be submitted and emphasized that the information was already available. I leave it here. I leave it here. So these are the overlords and the demigods we have in power. Their middle name is Tivri, corruption and foolishness. My brother, my sister, how will the nation develop? When all the key heads who need brains to work are not required to come along with brains, but with party cards. Hallelujah. Say it again, Black Rasta. Please say it again. Teach. I said, a nation that requires brains to work. Yet, when we call for audition for employment, we put aside brains and look at political party cards. Hallelujah. Praise be the Almighty Father. My God have mercy. Now you go to school and put in your head so much information and so much consciousness only for you to go for a job interview and you are asked to put aside all the knowledge and provide the party card. That is why the Ghana Airport Authority can bring in a Christmas uh, toy. Buy a Christmas toy for so many millions and yet nothing happened. That is how come these same people who proclaim that they are democratic and patriotic even though they are nowhere near patriotism, can refuse to provide information that is supposed to be a national information. It's not a personal information. It's information that belongs to us as a nation. I need it to be able to help develop the nation. You sit on it and say, no, if you are not a dirty, corrupt person, who the hell are you? It hurts me. And I am very, very bitter. Yet these are the party dogs, the barking dogs, my brother, my sister, who try to defend anything that is not defensible. How ghosts own money, how ghosts own bank accounts, and they are still sending Momo from their graves, and so on and so forth. Your end shall be very disastrously bitter. To join news, I applaud you that you have been able to follow due process. 
and to the Ghana Airport Company Limited. Shame on you. Shame on you. You need to be recolonized and sent back into slavery where Satan will continue to sodomize you. Hallelujah. I'll leave it here. Finally, before I go, I have a message for Alan Chenmanting. Alan, have you realized that everybody else has run away from you? Catherine Afeku says, hey, I supported him, but I don't support him anymore. The people who supported you, who were MPs, all have run away from you. Even in the northern region, those who supported you now say they support Baomia. My God have mercy. So in a twinkle of an eye, people can flip and flop. What does this teach us? Alan Chairman Ting, he tells us that times can change. That nothing in life is permanent. If we all looked at the nation, the bigger picture, I am not sure we will be in these terrible times like this. Whatever it is, Alan, go sit back and understand that you have had fair weather friends. They only supported you because of the label that you had on yourself. They did not support you because of the content of your character. Hallelujah. Say it again. They looked at the level that you carried. They did not look at the content that you had. So once you shared off the label, they decided to flip and flop on you. Think about it. Another day, we shall discuss it. Eric Mawena Egberta, my very good brethren, is in the house. My brother, how are you doing? You good? It's time, I know. You okay? You good? Yes, I am. Everything is good. Yes, everything. <laughs> he told me it's time. He doesn't everything want to talk. Is, everything is great. All everything right. Great. So, yeah, but we have some hot news, right? Yes, you have something Alan, on Alan. Alan is in the news. Uh, he's been responding to...